I have Greg Fox back with me again for the third time. That qualifies you as being called a regular now. Congratulations. Two more <laughs> stamps and you get a free podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I got up this morning and I looked at the weather here and the weather here is horrible. It's raining. It's 42 degrees. And I was thinking about our interview and I said, well, I bet Greg is having a much better time. He's probably out surfing. So I Googled Sacramento and that is not the case. It was colder <laughs> there than it was here. <laughs> Negative. Yeah. No, it's 33 degrees this morning, man. So. What is the deal? I thought you lived in California. Yeah, well, we live in the valley and on clear nights. The heat just escapes and it really socks in the fog and the cold. The night times get pretty chilly here. The day times with the sun out still get up to like 50, 60 degrees. But people have really been calling in lately. We're on about a two week stretch right now. We've got seven more days in the future of just 30 degree nights, 32, 33 degree nights. And so that'll keep the phone ringing. When I pictured Sacramento, I never pictured it that cold. Is that typical? Yeah, absolutely. We've been really dry for this year as opposed to last year. We had like a record rainfall last year. And then this year, we're not getting any rain for last year. Like that was great for business. Rain and cold weather really gets the phones going. And so I wasn't sure. I knew we were looking at an average rainfall season this year, but it's been a nothing rainfall. There's no snow up in the mountains right now for skiing. At least it's been cold enough at night lately so that we can start getting some calls coming in. Keep my guys busy. I just hired another guy starting Monday. So enough to keep growing, you know. So it sounds good. Did you have another guy? Now, will he be a service technician or an installer? All of our guys get hired knowing that they are install, maintenance, and service technicians. And you're the sales guy. You're also the sales guy out there as well. So when I hire my guy, I hire him at a certain hourly wage, usually in the mid-20s an hour. And then whenever they sell systems, they get 6% of that equipment sale price too. So our jobs usually sell for our starting jobs start out around eight or nine thousand dollars. That's a good six, seven hundred dollars for those guys per job. So one of those guys, so he's an installer, he does maintenance, he does service, and he sells. And when he's out there on the job, he's gonna make like ninety thousand dollars this year. That is really impressive. Yeah. I was doing the numbers in my head here. If you sell four jobs in a month and they roughly 10 grand per job. You just made yourself 2,400 bucks. Bank. I mean, my guys are pretty happy right now. Jeez Louise, Greg, you know, when I came up in the trade, I got paid $5 an hour. I started at $12 an hour at Bell Brothers as an install helper. Man, oh man. That was, that was in 2010. My information come from 1995. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that company don't pay squat. Yeah, whatever the minimum wage was, my father paid me 1% above that. So Thanks, Dad. It could be worse. Could be a statement that was used. Hey, Zach, it could be worse. At least you had a job you learned, and he knew what he was teaching you was a valuable trade. So He did, and I did learn, and it was all worth it, and I would have traded anything for it, but I still like to whine about it periodically. I'm uh, happy to look back at $12 an hour and think, wow, because it was really $10 an hour. Because I didn't have my EPA certificate yet or my 410 certificate. But they said, as soon as you get those two certificates, then we'll bump you up to $12 an hour. First day on the job, I only had like a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of dykes, and a little leather a satchel of it. <laughs> I mean, that I put my three tools in. That's what I showed up for work on my first day. But. When you first started your business, Greg, how did you choose a brand you were going to sell and what brand did you start with? Initially, when you go out on your own, you're thinking you're hit with, oh, what equipment am I going to actually put in? When I worked at the big company in town here, we always installed Rude products and we didn't really sell anything else. So, I mean, I, I installed for two or three solid years with those guys and every single day it was a Rude, 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 heat pumps, gas electric package units gas split systems, rude. And at the same time, as I became a lead installer, every once in a while I'd come across a job where I had some technical information I needed. I always knew that I could call this guy, Eric Schumann from Rude. I thought he worked for Rude all this time. He's a technical support guy. He was patient. He would pick up the phone. Imagine that, you know, a technical support guy picking up the phone. He could always talk you through the problem. When I went out on my own, that was a major influence for me. It was like, I'm new out on my own 
well, what if I run into problems? I mean, I can always rely on Eric Schumann. Who's he with? Oh, he's with Rude. So I'm going to stick with Rude. Rude's what I know. I'm going to do that first. That's kind of who I chose. Now, when you're choosing a brand, as advice to everybody out there, should you automatically choose the one that you know best? I think so. You're comfortable with it. You've got a lot of other stuff going on, getting your contractor's license, getting your insurance settled, getting your supplies, your truck, getting everything else settled in. Just go with something that is easy and you already know it right off the bat, I think. And that's what really swayed my opinion of which uh, manufacturer to use. So here in town, we have like three different warehouses, three different distributors, heating and cooling, RSD, and Ferguson East West. All of those guys sell Rude or Ream. I wasn't sure. I just thought, oh, I'm just buying Rude. Rude's going to be happy with me, whoever I buy it from. And the closest guy in town to me is RSD, Refrigeration Supply. I went over there. They had a great pricing on equipment and they wanted to get me on as a dealer. And I didn't know what that was meant, <laughs> but I said, well, let's just try. I mean, this is my first install. So I need a two and a half ton gas split system. They gave me a price. I say, hey, that sounds great. I go over to the house. I'm sizing up the job. I notice like the refrigerant lines are small, like got a quarter inch line on the liquid line. So I have a technical question. So I call Eric Schumann. I call him up. I say, hey, I just want to run this by you. I'm putting in a rude two and a half ton. The suction line is this size and the liquid line is this size. What do you think about it? Am I going to lose capacity on it? He says, oh, you can just turn to page uh, 16 here. Let's look at your line set length and let's look at the you know, blah, blah, blah. Turns out I'm going to lose like 2% capacity, 1% capacity or something like that with that line set. And he's fine with that. I'm like, okay, so you're fine with that. Great. Continue our conversation. I told him, Hey, you know, uh, so I'm going to be buying rude, you know? And he's like, Hey, great, man. That's awesome. And from uh, RSD over here in town, they're, they're pretty close to me. He's like, Oh, you're buying from our competitor. I was like, uh, I don't, no, uh, I, I thought you worked for Rude, you know. And, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it turns out he actually works for Ferguson East West, who is another one of those distributors. I'm like, well, hey, listen, Eric, I mean, uh, I'll put this system in. I want to be wherever you are. So who do you work for? He's like, I work for Ferguson East West. We're down in Manteca. We'll deliver equipment up to you anytime you need it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. So I get signed up with them. And they become my dealer, even though, man, their prices were like quite a bit higher than RSD. So like that was the big tug for me. It was like, man, RSD is giving me this great price. But you guys, this big Ferguson company, you've heard of Ferguson, right, Zach? Sure. We have one in town here. They're huge companies. They were charging me like non-dealer pricing and I was feeling it. What kind of percentage are you talking about over the RSD pricing? The furnace was literally like, $250 more for a 80%, 75,000 BTU, 80% furnace. That um, seems significant. The condenser outside was, God, like four or $500 more. This is really going to cut into my net profit because I've already given my customer the price. So I can't switch now on this job. I'm going to do this RSD job. Ferguson East West is who I settled down with. And they did end up after, I don't know, like three jobs, they did end up starting to give me dealer pricing which helped because that brought my pricing way down. Eventually, Zach, they even gave me even better pricing. They gave me their best pricing on equipment. So I was pretty happy with that. Did the pricing match the RSD pricing? It actually came a little bit better. That's good. That's good. I was afraid that you were going to get to the end of the story and you followed someone that you trusted in your technical rep and still had to suffer through high pricing. I'm glad it actually came down all the way. Once I started talking to Ferguson East West a little bit, I think it was like right about that time, maybe a month into my brand new business and maybe two weeks into my brand new business. And the TM, the territory manager, Greg Zapata, good buddy of mine now, he reaches out to me and says, hey, Greg, I heard you started up a business. We'd love to be a blah, blah, blah. I tell him, I'm going to use Root. I'm going to go through Ferguson, your company, and, and you guys are going to hook me up. So he got me pricing. He's like, Greg, I've known you for years. We were over at Bell Brothers when you were an installer. I'm going to give you the best pricing I possibly can. I think you're really going to go far and uh, we want to make an investment in you. And I was like, perfect. That's what we need, man. It's like these guys getting all buddy, buddy with me and you go to their warehouse to go pick up parts and duct work and this and that. And you know, when you go to the warehouse, you go to the warehouse there and you, 
you see the warehouse manager or the parts guy behind the desk and you start shooting the shit with these guys and um and you get get all buddy buddy and you start developing relationships with these guys like hey you know i think this guy actually likes me we're cool with each other that's nice to have that relationship as this story goes along that's what all of this is about we've talked about on facebook and other groups that we've chatted on people ask all the time which distributor do you guys use and why and everybody will say oh i use day night oh, i use pain i use bryant a lot of the guys that have been around for a while say i don't really care what i'm using as long as the distributor is fair and honest and cool with me like works for me develops relationship with me everything is good between us i'll stay with that guy if he treats me right i'll stay with that distributor let me ask you a quick question when you're looking at a distributor of course you want the people to like you what are the things that you're looking for in a good distributor basically just do what you said you would do you said you would bring me this equipment that i'm buying from you you said you would bring this out to me between 8 and 10 the day of my installation here at this job if it's 10 30 and the equipment's not there yet it's uh frustrating you know zach you go out to an install you've got that equipment pulled out in a, like half hour we've got that stuff out sitting out on the street for about a half hour now we're waiting on the equipment to get there we want to be efficient in our day like i want to be done by like three o'clock three thirty and it all depends on whether the warehouse guys get me my equipment in time too well let me follow up then i know it's more critical for you than for me getting equipment on time because a lot of times you have a crane as well that's waiting on you which makes it more critical have yeah. you found that over the last couple of years you've been in business, as you make more money, basically, do they pay you more attention? Do your deliveries arrive on time more often than they would have at the beginning? Do you see things changing or is it pretty much the same? I got this great thing going on with Rude and Ferguson East West. As I'm buying more stuff, they send me down to Las Vegas for the Rude convention. They tell me I don't have to pay for anything. Fly down there, get your hotel, send us the receipt we'll pay you back. But last year, I spent about $200,000 with those guys, right? Now I'm spending a significant amount of money with those guys in parts, supplies, and equipment. So that's not just all equipment, but that's also parts and supplies too. And I'm filling up my vans with that. These guys, they tell you, you know, if you ever need anything when you're out on the job, give me a call, man. We'll run it out to you. You feel like they're being honest when they tell you that until they don't. And it's like a crucial moment in an install that you're working on and then all of a sudden, it seems like I haven't spent that money with them now. And that $200,000 that I'm spending with them that year doesn't mean anything. The day I need a 16-inch duct out on the job at a crucial point on an install on a 100-degree day. Stuff like that sticks with me, Zach. You hurt me once or twice, cool. But you keep doing it after a while. Like You keep telling me, no, I'm not going to do that. Basically, because you're not the big guys in town. Because I know they'll do it for the big guys that are spending a million dollars with them, million, two million dollars in equipment. I just kind of want that for us too. This happens a couple times where you shrug me off like I'm nobody at crucial points in my business. We're going to have problems. I have just the backbone to stand up for myself when it comes to like that. So in the middle of summer, while my guys are out there working, I start looking around for other brands or distributors. And this would not have happened if they would have just taken care of me. Like the job gets delivered between 8 and 10, right? I call it like 1030 saying, I'm just asking for someone during the day to bring me out a 16-inch duct or whatever it was that day, 16-inch duct and a collar for the job. And you can bring it to me anytime today, all right? And you're only like seven miles away from me. Warehouse manager tells us, no, we can't do that. We're not going to do that for you. It's like... Ow, you know, that hurts. So that does hurt. I've had them say that we're not going to bring something out even when they screwed up the order before. Yeah. What is that? Right. <laughs> Come on, guys. Me and my brother were waiting for a delivery one time. This delivery was coming from John Stone. It was Goodman equipment. It was probably 1999, 2000, somewhere in there. They were heading right up to our job with a package unit and a condenser. So we're out there eight o'clock in the morning waiting. That unit arrived at one o'clock that afternoon mm. because someone else called that made a little bit more money and they put them ahead of us because what are we going to do about it? We can't do anything about it. Our business goes somewhere else. They don't feel it at all. But what it sounds like to me is that even though there's big boys out there where you're at, 
you're still a significant chunk of change there, Greg. So I'm surprised that they would do right. that to you. Right. I'm feeling that too. Like I'm giving you guys all of my business. I'm not buying parts and supplies from anywhere else. That's a big amount of money. I'm not buying equipment from anybody else. I'm being loyal to you guys. I don't care how small of a company I am. When you guys say you're going to do something just to get my business, like in the beginning, we're all buddy, buddy and everything's great. Cause I'm, I'm going to give you guys my business, right? When it comes down to it, down to the brass tacks in the middle of the summer, when we really need somebody. And I know you've got an extra guy sitting around. It's just respect, you know, man, you're making an investment, a little bit of extra time to keep my business. That's the first real hiccup I was having with those guys. I started looking around. I knew that Ferguson also deals train on the other side of town. So you got Ferguson train here in town. You got Ferguson Rude, which is Ferguson East West. I knew that I could keep my territory manager and move over to uh, Ferguson train. However, I was kind of thinking at the time, I just want to get away from Ferguson. I want to get away from the big guys. This company over on the other side of town here is called CFM and they deal American standard. I call these guys and then I very quickly realized that the territory manager for CFM has no idea anything about HVAC. He's just starting this job. So he's like a brother-in-law of the owner and he's a territory manager. I'm like, okay, this is going to be fun. Oh, so, <laughs> so we meet for lunch and he brings his sales manager. This sales manager, this guy is over the top, like over the top. We're the best in town of blah, blah, blah. And we're going <laughs> to, we're going to give you this and we get 80 trainings a, a year and this and that. And oh my gosh, I was just like, and then you got this guy over here, the TM who is just quiet. He's not saying a word. And the sales manager keeps going on and I'm having a hard time getting in word. And it was just like, okay, man, gotcha. Like I was exhausted after that conversation, <laughs> uh, but they were nice. And they were also saying that they were going to match my rude pricing or beat it, which was interesting to me because I feel like American standard is a little bit more of a premium product than rude. I wanted to see if they were going to actually do that. And so I tell them I'm going to sign up under their silver plan and I'm going to be a dealer for them. And then they start working on pricing for me. And they get me pricing, and their prices looked really good to me, Zach. Their prices were meeting or beating my already awesome rude pricing. So, At the American Standard Place, were you a big fish in a smaller pond? Is that why they were so excited? Yeah, maybe. I'd let them know what my sales were and what kind of numbers I were doing. So, you know, I think they were seeing money signs. But at the same time, I think that they lost a couple big accounts recently too. Like I found out later that they had just recently lost a couple bigger accounts. So I think they were shaking things up in there and trying to refocus on customer service. I just happened to get there at the right time. Uh, I also think that doing this process in the middle of summer is an insane project to try and do, <laughs> to try and change distributors and try to change equipment manufacturers in the middle of summer and your pricing and your price books and all that stuff in the middle of summer is an insane task. It was exhausting, but these guys wanted my business and the owner of the company came out and shook my hand and talked to me for a few minutes. He says, hey, there's no need to wait until fall to change equipment. We can make this happen for you right now in the middle of summer. So we really want your business. And in the meantime, they're giving me a tour of the warehouse, taking me to lunches and we're talking we're really nailing things down. One of the things I kind of thought was weird about those guys is that they said that they offer last year, they had about 80 training sessions for their dealers and their technicians. 80. That's a lot. I mean, that is a lot of training. You ever heard of that? At their supply house, they offered those trainings. Yeah. yeah. That is a lot. I would think more along the lines of a couple of them per month would be normal. Me too. Me too. Then I was like, Oh, that's, that's a lot. I'm not sure. That's hard for me. <laughs> it's hard for me to even get a distributor to have like three or four trainings a year for me. They always say, oh, yeah, we're really going to get into training this year. Months just keep ticking by and nobody's doing anything. So that's more typical for what I've noticed. So I go back to my rude TM, Greg, and I let him know that, hey, I'm leaving rude. I'm definitely leaving rude right in the middle of summer. I'm going to go over to American Standard. He's also the TM for Ferguson on the train side. I like him a lot. I listen to him when he tells me, I'll have my train guys meet or beat any of your American standard pricing. 
so that we can keep your business at Ferguson. I'm not dealing with East West anymore. And he's like, nope, you don't have to. We'll take care of you over here at Ferguson Train on the north side of town. And they do. That's exactly what they do. They are able to work it up so that my prices meet or beat American Standard or Rude. That was appealing to me. They also said that they would match CFM, American Standards, co-op advertising deal with me. At CFM, they were offering me 4% co-op. And the traditional co-op is about 2 to 3%. So Train also says that they'll match that 4% co-op for me as well. With CFM, you have to accrue that that co-op amount over the year, and then you have to spend it by the end of the year. Whereas what I liked about Train's proposal was that they said that they will front you that 4% based off of what they think you're going to buy that year from them. And I told them that I know that I'm going to buy at least $200,000 of equipment from you next year. So you're going to be 4% of that. I think it was like $8,000. That's $8,000 worth of advertising and t-shirts and things like that, that they're willing to split with me 50-50, which really adds up. Well, let me ask you something. Since you talked about co-op, how important is that to you as a business owner to have something like that, a co-op relationship with your brand? Well, it's really nice because, I mean, I've been playing hockey at this rink for 17 years. There's always advertising space on the boards there. And I always thought that'd be a really cool thing if I could get my company logo and phone number and website right on the boards there. I mean, look at all these people that come to this rink. This is the perfect demographic for us. People who have extra money to spend on expensive recreational sports like ice hockey. This is the perfect type of people I want to advertise to. They have two rinks there and it's $3,600. That's a lot of money to put your banner on the boards, hoping that people are going to see it. There are a ton of people that play hockey there. There are youth recreational leagues where mom and dad are looking at little Johnny on the bench on the other side of the ice. And if my company name is right there, I just thought that that would be a big thing. And I know it's going to pay off. But $3,600 for two rinks, that's a lot of money, man. And I was like, that's ridiculous. I'm not doing that. But co-op makes that more reasonable. Now it's only $1,800 for me, which comes out to $900 a rink. And then Ferguson says that they're going to agree to co-op that. So that's $1,800. So since I've been with Ferguson Train, this year, I've spent $55,000 with them in the last three months. 4% of that is $2,000. They're matching that 4%. That's $1,800 that they've already co-opted out for me for this year. The year's ending. Starting next year, we'll have a new year. I've already accrued enough. I met my obligation, $55,000 spent with them. They gave me 4% of that in co-opable dollars, $2,000. I'm just asking for $1,800, $1,900 to uh, advertise on the boards there. So, hey, I like it. I think it's pretty important is what I'm saying. We're going to do some t-shirts next year with the train logo on the sleeves and they're going to pay for half of those shirts. That really starts to add up. Do you have plans for them decorating your vans in the future? Negative. Why not? Negative because it's my brand, my brand, my company brand. That's what I'm advertising. I don't want to advertise train. I don't want somebody to see my van mistakenly look up train. I want them to look up Box Family Heating and Air. I think that's smart. I think that's what we all talk about. Us one-man shows running around. That's all we ever talked about was, we're the brand, we're the brand, we're the brand. I strongly yes. believe that's true. Absolutely. We're the brand. They're just lucky to get our business, I think. Plus, a lot of us were selling Goodman, so we had to go with we're the brand. Yeah. Can't tell them we're Goodman. That was crazy when Juan, one time, like he put my profile picture and he superimposed a Goodman label on the back of the van <laughs> right next to me. And I was so mad. I was just like, Juan, you <laughs> <laughs> That was hilarious. He's done that several times. I don't know what he does at home. He has like Photoshop or something like that at his house. He's made some hilarious sort of memes and stuff over the last several months. Yeah. <laughs> you got to love it, though. Goodman guy yeah. poking fun. Big bad train, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, you're a jerk, man. Oh, yeah. We're getting him on the podcast, either this podcast, Tradesman, or the Shop Talk podcast. I told him he's got to come on. Yeah, that dude's funny, man. So for sure, Juan is awesome. Let's get back to the serious stuff. I want to ask you something about what you've said so far because you sound real up on train, real happy about the train part of it. It's another Ferguson. So that old Ferguson must just love you to death 
So what's going on back there? Have you even been back there? The transition's taking effect. The GM of Ferguson East West and the sales manager of East West, they start finding out and they actually call me and they're like, Hey man, what happened? You know, um, I didn't deal with those guys on a daily basis, but to get a call from them was actually kind of flattering because it was like, did something go wrong? Why all of a sudden did you guys just make this change? And I'm like, I didn't want to make a big deal out of it. So I just kind of made up like this thing. I've been installing Rude since I started HVAC with Bell Brothers. And for me, it's kind of been like just dating my high school sweetheart. And I just wanted to see what else is out there. So I just kind of floated that out there for him. So I didn't want anybody to get in trouble, namely the warehouse manager who kept telling me no on certain requests. I didn't want to make a big deal about that. So I just kind of made that up. Apparently, that was a big deal. I didn't realize that that was such a big deal that I moved. It didn't seem like while I was there that I was that important. And then when you leave, all of a sudden, they let you know how important you are. It's like, well, too bad. (laughs) They never miss you till you're gone, man. Fingers are getting pointed, blame starts going around, and I just need to move on to a different piece of equipment. As you know, I moved into the warehouse this year, and as I move into there, I need a parts supplier. I need somebody who's now who's going to be completely devoted to bringing me parts as I need them. I asked Greg, hey, should I go with Ferguson East West or Ferguson Train as far as parts, you know, like control boards, capacitors, zip ties, mud, all that stuff, just stuff that you would normally stock your fans with so the guys as they come into the warehouse they can just grab and go and it's more convenient for them greg says i feel like it'd be a lot smarter if you use ferguson east west they're right here they're very close to you you can get your equipment from ferguson train and you can get your parts from ferguson east west and i say okay i'll take your advice and we'll do that as i move in i order ten thousand dollars worth of parts and everything i build my shelves and stuff like that and the manager there was actually pretty helpful in helping me kind of figure out a design and stuff like that, layout of the warehouse, which I was very appreciative of. Here we go again, not even like a month later, I get in setting up shop. I ask for some flue pipe on an upcoming job, you know, so this is parts that I'm asking for. I just bought like 10 grand from you. I'm ordering like refill parts, spending anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars every week so far, just in parts, just to keep me stocked up. So I got an upcoming install coming up and I asked for some flue pipe. Well, we don't have that flue pipe. It's over on the other side of town. It's like 10 miles away, Zach, but it's another Ferguson. It's a third Ferguson in town. It's Ferguson air cold. They sell like day and night over there. I say, okay, great. I don't need that flue pipe for like three days. So is there any way if somebody as they were driving around town could possibly maybe just stop by air cold in the next couple of days and pick up that flue pipe for me? hang on, let me go ask the warehouse manager. And what's he say? No, I'm not going to go pick up something that small of an order for you. I get livid. (laughs) Like, I'm just like, what? This guy's doing it to me again, man. You know, like I could go over to the other side of town and grab it. But if you really want my business, you got to make an investment on my hand as well. Greg Zapata comes by. Before he arrived there, I was literally going to tell him Bring a truck because you're going to take this supplies here and you're going to take it back to Ferguson East West. You're going to take this $10,000 worth of parts and supplies right here and you're going to take it all back with you. He's like, Greg, hang on just a second. Let me take care of this for you. He's like, what if I can guarantee you that Ferguson Train, who you're buying equipment through now, if they will promise to deliver you any part you need anytime you need it. I can already tell you, they don't carry some of the unique stuff like I do. I like this 30 by 60 secondary drain pan for the 90% furnaces and train doesn't carry that one. They carry like a 32 by 60 and it's already got the stanchions built into it and it doesn't bend. Trying to shove that up into an attic access, it doesn't fit. Very good point about that pan. You can't twist it, you can't bend it, you can't get it up there. I like this one. It's a 30 by 60. It fits up in there just perfectly. It's what we used at Bell Brothers and Ferguson East West has it. Are you guys going to be able to get me that? Greg, I promise you, we are going to adapt to anything that you guys need, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, Greg, let's do that. I'll trust you. We're going to do this. Now I give all my parts and supply business, all my equipment business to Ferguson Train. They've done a really good job of helping me out and doing what they said that they would do the manager of that warehouse, he actually lives here in the neighborhood with me. So 
Gene. So I see him. That's important to me that these relationships are good, that I have a good relationship with him because there's things that you need sometimes, Zach, that when you need it, you need it. And so I want to have a good relationship with all these people, all these TMs around here so that when I need a part, I can get it, you know, because I'm telling the customer I can get it. I don't want to look like a jerk when I can't get it. No, I completely understand that. I've been a jerk a few times, so I understand that completely. Now, about the original Ferguson, you had the warehouse manager that was a handful. Now, if he was never there, if there was a different warehouse manager that was more agreeable, would you still be at that Ferguson selling Rudd products? Yeah, I would be. <laughs> Without a doubt, this would have never happened if you would have just taken care of me at those crucial times when we need it. This is a team. And I told him one time, I know you're sitting there in that little comfy air-conditioned office right now while I'm up here in the attic sweating my butt off. And he was like, hey, now, you know I'm not like that. I'm working just as hard in this warehouse. I'm like, no, I know you. You're sitting in that warehouse office right now with that big old window shaker air conditioner that's cooling your uh, office just sweetly, aren't you? That's not right, man. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you a question now, Greg, because I can tell there there's some anger coming off you when you tell that story. I can tell it. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you a straight-up question. Do you have a temper? I have a backbone. Uh, Wait, that's okay. not the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, I'm not going to let people walk all over me. You know what I mean? Yes, I have a temper. If you need an example, uh, here's a prime example of that. I play hockey. Typically, every season, uh, I am the guy who has the most penalty minutes. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm usually the guy every season that's just on the verge of being suspended for the rest of the league. And I'm working on it, man. I'm working on it. But the thing is, I just kind of grew up in a time. I grew up in Indiana. I was one of the younger kids in the family. I get picked on a lot when I was a kid. I don't like it when things aren't fair. And I don't like it when people tell me something and then they don't do it. Because that's what I'm trying to do as a contractor is I'm telling these people that I'm going to do something for them. And I'm going to do it by God. I'm going to take care of them. I'm going to do whatever it takes because I said I would do it. You know what? You probably don't go to your jobs and say, this person's buying, we'll use train for an example, the XR14. This person's buying XR14. You don't treat them any differently than you would a person that's buying an XV20, would you? No. I'm just happy that they're trusting me with their business. I don't care what equipment they really want. I'm just glad that they're trusting us with their business. Wonder why supply houses, it's not just your supply house, it's supply houses all across the country. There's some great people there, but the impression I got over my 10 years owning a business, well, we're rounding up 8.5 to 10 on that just to make it a nice round number. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the impression I get is you're exactly right. If you don't carry a little bit of weight with you, they don't care as much about you. There's a few places that's been wrong. At East Coast Metal Distributors, it didn't matter whether I bought $10 worth or $50,000 worth, they always treated me well. But other places, I was an afterthought because I never sold a whole lot of equipment. And right. I wonder why it has to be like that when the business owners are demonstrating that treating everybody with respect gets you a long way. And those people grow and become better customers, just like you would grow, become a bigger business and stick with those people. So I don't understand yeah. lack of forethought to me. Lack of forethought. Lack of seeing that I'm a contractor that started with one person, just myself, two years ago, six months later, hired another guy. Six months later, hired another guy. Six months later, hired another guy. This could possibly be a big company someday. I know that Greg saw that. He tells me that. He sees that. If we wanted to be, we could be one of the big guys in town. So I appreciate that. And that's why I stay with him because he's willing to bend over backwards for me. He's like, Greg, if you need a 16-inch duct and a collar in the middle of the day on a 100-degree day, call me. Will you please call me? I will go pick it up for you. Don't leave it up to the warehouse to do that delivery for you. Call me. If I have to, I'll go pick it up myself and bring it out to you. And I'll bring lunch to you too, you know? So, <laughs> all, right, all right, man, I'll do that, you know? So it's a learning process on both of our ends. I didn't know. Oh, call Greg. I didn't know that. Same with the flu pipe. I didn't think about it. I didn't think, Greg, would you go over to Air Cold and pick this up for me? I really need it for my job on Tuesday. It's Thursday today. And he would have done it. I don't know. I don't think about that. I'll do it now. So, You want one six-inch tab collar delivered on Friday 
to Los Angeles. The thing is, I know that Greg Zapata will do that for me. And that TM, contractor relationship, is what I really like about him. And he's going to be listening to this podcast because I'm going to forward this on to him. And he's going to be on his treadmill doing his workout. And he's going to listen to this. So, hi, Greg. Well, I'll tell you what. Greg Zapata, we're talking to you right now. Greg Fox is left. He's gone. I want you on this podcast talking to me about whatever you want. All right, we're going to cut back to Greg Fox now. Greg, welcome back. Thank you. Appreciate that. (laughs) I just want to put it out there because we're always looking for good guests. I have already told Greg we need to get him on here. Greg's a character, and Greg has been doing this for 23 years. We'll let that go out to Greg Zapata there. We're formal invitation right here. You can email me at Z-A-C-H-A-R-Y. P-S-I-O-D-A at gmail.com. I'm going to hand it back over to Greg for a final question. Tell us about Train, your experiences so far with the equipment itself, because we haven't talked about any of the equipment, really, because most of it's pretty good for what you said. My experiences are Train and Rudd are pretty good. So how's it gone so far with setting the new equipment? I really like the weather guard. I'm trying to put in the XL 16 eyes, 18 eyes, because they come with the weather guard. We have a bronze, silver, gold, platinum package which means 14 sear, 16 sear, 18 sear, and 20 sear package. So if you order the 16 sear or above, you're going to get that good looking weather guard on there. And that's very signature of trains uh, product line that came out in the eighties. When people think of train, that's the unit they're thinking about is that one with the weather guard on there. I like to make sure that my 16 sear guys get that. They say, well, Greg, not a lot of people order that weather guard with 16 sear. I'm like, well, I'm going to. Any 16 sear I sell is going to come with the weather guard, so I need you guys to stock that for us. They've gone out of their way to make sure that that, that happens. So, And the majority of the systems I sell are 16 sear. Rarely do people order that 14 sear from us. They typically go with one of the two middle ones, the 16 or the 18 sear. Have you done any 18 or 20 variable speed units? Not the variable speed units yet, no. But the 18 sear that we do is the two-stage. 14 sear, 16 sear, and then our 18 sear is two stage heating and cooling. And then the 20 sear is the one that we're doing the fully variable on. All heat pumps? No, they're regular air conditioners. I will tell you, all the equipment that we've put in has been great, fired up, awesome, super quiet. Like, I cannot tell you how impressed I am with the noise level of the condensers when we fire them up with that weather guard on there. And we also add a compressor sound blanket to every install. So those units haven't been coming with sound blankets on them. That's just one of the Fox family extras that we always put on. We've always put on a compressor sound blanket. We always put on a compressor start kit, condensate safety switch up in the attic on the drain pan. We always do the Honeywell 9000 Wi-Fi thermostats. That's just included. That's just what you get. But when we do that, I tell you what, the noise level on that, condenser is super super quiet and everybody keeps remarking about that yeah they're fantastic i said the american standard counterparts for some of those they were 15 sear back then but they were so quiet i mean you heard a little bit of fan noise it's almost like a mini split looks like a little bit louder yeah exactly like literally all you hear is the fan i have had a couple snags this past week we just installed a s9x2 95 percent two-stage furnace and control board went bad on the second day of operation. Oh, that's kind of scary. Yeah. The uh, customers were very nice to us. We came out immediately. Like I came back the next day. I paid $50 for expedited shipping so that the part would be there at 930 in the morning. My appointment was 11 to 1 the next day. I went out there myself and changed out the control board, fired it up, and the system ran well. The flame sensor, the control board was only sensing so much of the signal from the flame sensors. I don't know what's going wrong there, but my tech, Colin, was uh, on the phone with tech support. Tech support's like, hey, do this, do this. Yep, you got a bad control board. And that's what it was. So, I mean, frustrating. That is frustrating. The flame sensor and the board wasn't interpreting the signal. That's interesting. A lot of times that can be grounding issues. That's true. The flame sensor was actually reading like 3.7, 3.8, something like that. The flame is there, obviously, and the flame sensor wasn't bad, but it was just the interpretation from the control board, so literally shutting it off within a few seconds. And those of us who are listening out there in podcast land, it is microamps he's talking about. Microamps DC, right? That's right. Make sure your meter has microamps. A lot of them are missing that. And then we just went to change a train compressor. 
they're Copeland scroll compressors that are painted orange. Whoa, yeah. what? wait a second. Oh. Train oh. compressors or Copeland scroll compressors? <laughs> Hold on a second. Alert the media. No, I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. They We had the lowdown from Larry Cole. There is a slight difference in some of their compressors, but it's not reliability related. It's only related to producing a few more BTUs. That was his confirmation as a person who worked at Train. So basically, they're the right same on. thing. I'm completely upfront with everybody on that. Like Copeland makes great compressors. I've been working on them for years and they're great compressors. We just had an 11 year old train, not one we installed, where the compressor was hard starting. It just wasn't turning over. It had voltage. I tried to put a compressor start kit on it to get it to free up and start running, but it would not get going. Told the guy we can change this compressor out. We go get a compressor from train. We put it in and it shorted the ground out of the wow. box that's pretty bad we had one that was a week old a brand new install which was a tam 7 and i believe at that time the xb series but it shorted the ground one week after it was installed that's disheartening yeah. but not really anything with the supplier just some freak happening is what i attribute that to i that's all i can think of too the initial compressor it's not like it was shorted to ground it was just hard starting it just wasn't turning over. It's not like it was having an electrical issue. It seemed like it was a mechanical issue to have that come out of the box, you know, and that's frustrating. So we'll keep an eye on train and we'll see how it goes, Zach, because at this point in this time of the week, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you'll be satisfied with train. You know, we used to sell train back then. I don't tell anybody that, but we used to sell train a long time ago. Great units. Worst problem I ever had. It was sort of like your story was a train compressor that wouldn't start the very first time. It wasn't grounded, but it was just lock rotor. And boy, we drop kicked the unit. We shook it around. We dropped it because you could physically try to <laughs> jerk things loose sometimes. Especially if it's never run before. You jerk it loose, it might be good for all time or a week. You never know. But I think yeah. you'll be happy with train. Train's good stuff. Ream's good stuff. We all have the same compressors in them. Copeland's fine. I agree. I agree. I completely agree with that. Yeah. I think you'll be very successful, Greg. I don't know how long you're going to make it, Greg, but I think it's going to be 20, 30 years plus. It'd be awesome, man. That's the goal, you know? You'll be dwarfing ARS in no time. Greg, I appreciate you coming by here. Again, this is the third time. There will be a fourth time, probably in the next month or two. I'm going to drag you back in here. You're a great guest. Always willing to engage in conversation. So that is the number one rule here. I don't have to drag anything out of you. You're willing to talk. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure coming and talk to you, Zach. If you like this video, please try out my podcast, HVAC Shop Talk and the Tradesman Podcast. You can find these on Stitcher for Android, Podcast Addict for Android, or the podcast app for iPhone.